rolling. We're rolling. We did it. We're gonna. One take one marker. Do the show today. <sighs> do you remember the intro you created last week? Yeah, it's the Disney Channel intro. That's why it came so naturally. <laughs> Is that really what came to mind? Yeah, but I don't. Um. You don't remember it. <laughs> I'm Lizzie Gordon. This is Rylan Adams, and you're watching The, the Sip. Sip. See, I just have to black out a little bit, and then it comes like right to the surface. I'm gonna drink my rancid coffee. Do you want to talk about my breakdown? Is it interesting? I mean, <laughs> Rylan had a breakdown. We have to explain our change of scenery somehow, and damn. I don't think we have to explain anything. You know, the world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, explain your breakdown. We did not create a whole new setup for you just to do that. I'm just gonna chug it because it's disgusting. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Lizzie. It's done. Ugh. I am so out of whack, and I feel as though the world did not want us to podcast today. There were signs upon signs that were just begging us to cancel the show today. I think, that, you know, there was there was a power outage in the shed, and then you just didn't have the will to wake up and do the <laughs> podcast this morning, because what are the multitude of signs? <laughs> signs upon signs. Like, I woke up, and I thought no. to myself, I don't want a podcast today. <laughs> Sign number one. Sign number two. I <laughs> opened the shared document that I, had, I thought, because I get noticed notified every time you're typing on it yeah. and you typed on it a lot like the amount of times that you had opened the document or that I got notified that you yeah. had and then it's like oh I thought I was like wow Lizzie really did the damn thing and I open it and on the document was I finished another book <laughs> and I was like so I feel like there had to have been more. I was like so Lizzie finished a book and I went on vacation the end of the podcast but and then we get here and Chris is like the power's not working and then I'm sniffing around being so upset and angry and Lizzie's like, you need to stop. And now a dog just hit the tripod. Fake sniffing propane and readjust for the times. And we all know I'm not good at readjusting. <laughs> no, I. but I'm looking forward to an apology in two days. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And can we talk about the elephant in the room? What? The fact that he's like, I don't know if... What's in my pocket? Oh, weird. Oh, my God. No, that's not yours. Are that's you mine. Are you kidding me? That's mine. I I'm going to need some proof after this. <laughs> it came out of my pocket just now. I know, but what if you accidentally I brought snagged the it? So yesterday, I was helping my friend Mallory Murphy shoot her acting reel, and she needed an SD card, so Joe gave me this SD card, but when we tried to format it on the sound recording device, it said error, 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 and that's why it's in my pocket right now. So you're double downing on your jeans. Yeah, always. Okay. So... I don't know if y'all recall, but a few weeks ago, Rylan Adams took me to the mall and made me buy him some outfits. And then he said, this shirt is not me. <laughs> and he was wearing a shirt that looks exactly like this shirt. I wore it last week on the podcast. Uno threw his own ball in so that he could jump in the pool. Chris, could you help? <laughs> Chris, get that ball. Could you get the ball? Uno, no, absolutely not. Chris, I'm going to need you to jump in the pool and get that ball. Uno, so anyways. No. <laughs> no, Uno. He throws his own ball in the pool so he can give himself an excuse to get it. I love that for him. I wore the shirt that she's referring to last week on the podcast. And then you went out in town by yourself and got yourself a similar <laughs> fucking shirt. It's literally the exact same shirt. So. And, well, when I was in Palm Springs, I wanted to do like a Palm Springs makeover. Yeah, and which I love. When I started putting these on, the way that they fit my body, I thought was great for the podcast. And they complemented the colors of the podcast shed that we're no longer sitting in for whatever reason God had planned for us today. Mm -hmm. But I just thought... I love it. Okay. I think you look so cute. And I walked downstairs and I'm like, oh, Lizzie, is it too much to do two sweater shirts in two weeks? And then she was like, I want that and that cut in women's. I want to, I do. I want them all in women's styles. But it's super cute. Also, hello. Hello. Oh, you want acknowledgement for your nails? And? Your oh my gosh, your you glasses are gorgeous. Bitch. <laughs> no, I, and you know what? Maybe the world what? wanted us to sit outside so that you could wear your glasses because the, the reflection would have been insane inside. inside. Uh, maybe not. This is the first time I got the fancy lenses that like do blue light and reflective and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But these are the first glasses I ever put on and I was like, oh, am I living? Yeah, <laughs> they are gorgeous. They're Dolce and Gabbana. I feel like you could dress it up for a Grammys look even. I mean, I'm into it. And also my prescription was so outdated. I was like, put these on. And I was like, oh. Is this what you guys see every day? Uh -huh. Is this what she looks like the world? Because it is kind of beautiful. <laughs> kind of beautiful. What's your prescription? I have no idea. But the doctor was like, it's going to be different. And I was like, oh, my God. Really? She's like, yeah. And then I was going to get, I got, I get new lenses put into all my old glasses. I usually never get new 
frames. So boring. Right. But I give the girl my old frames and she goes, oh, we're not going to put new lenses in these. And I go, what? Like, why not? She's like, these are disgusting. Oh. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> She's like, do you see how on the inside the fucking iron is rusting and rotting? I was like. Yeah, I do see that. But like, is there? A, can you clean it? She's like, no. <laughs> those are disgusting. And I was like, they do give me rashes. You're right. Fuck those glasses. Let's get new ones. And these are gorgeous. Yeah, I'm and obsessed. They, they really spark a flare of personality. And you know what? I think you're a whole new woman. I'm living. Do you have an update for us? On these? Well, oh, okay. <laughs> On my purple snake nails? <laughs> Is this what you wanted updated? Mm -hmm, they're beautiful. Did you want me to talk about the text message I sent you? Sure. So Sorry, I... I'm such a fan <laughs> Yeah, shake it I off. I apologize in advance. Like, I really need just like a 10-minute meditation to get back in Welcome the zone. Welcome it in. Welcome it in. Take a deep breath. <sighs> it's a beautiful spring break day. Whoa. Spring break. The atmosphere is very Oprah of us. If yeah. If you hear a plane, you hear a plane. You can't be upset. It's like literally too beautiful to be upset. Yeah, it is gorgeous outside. Um, okay, so I was at minding my own business yesterday, as I always do, uh -huh. living my life, helping Mallory Murphy with her acting role, as you guys already know, via SD Card Gate 2022. Get that knot, or I'm going to get it. <laughs> get that knot. <laughs> this is so uncomprehendable what we're doing. So anyways, while he tries to find the comprehension and the will to go on, <laughs> I get a text from my new baby mama, Kate. Uh -huh. And she said, Soph and I got our nails done today, and Alexis said she was telling a customer how she has a new client who drives from L.A. talking about me, Lizzie. And the person ended up saying they watched the sip, and they were like, oh, Lizzie, I watch her show. Your hairstylist? My nail stylist. Oh, that's what I meant. Alexis at Nailology in San Diego. And so she knows that you're driving down and she listens to your show. Uh, no, Alexis had another client and Alexis was talking to the client and said she has a new client, me, who drives down from LA to get her nails done. And the girl goes, oh, from the SIP, Lizzie. Have you I watched the show. Have you shouted out the actual place before? How do I they feel know like this? I say I go to San Diego and get my nails done. Okay. And I put it on my Instagram. Because I was wearing the SIP hoodie when I was in there, and I made Kate take my picture. <laughs> I made Kate go, is that Lizzie Gordon from the SIP? And I went, stop. Stop. That's so cool. Um, that's not why it happened, though. It just happened. To, it was an organic thing. Yeah, I guess the girlies do that. I've heard, like, multiple people in multiple days say that they go outside of L.A. to get their things, their manicuring done, because it's just, it's half the price. It's beyond it being half the price. It's, like, the customer service of it all. Like, this woman, Alexis... I, you know, she might be saving my life. Like, honestly, like she, the communication and the conversations that we have are like, wow, dude, like, thank God for you. So Plus, you don't just put your AirPods in and pretend no, something's going on. I authentically like really like this woman. Like wow. I'm invested in her spiritually. She's invested in me spiritually. I hope to God. And if she's not, she's really acting like she is. So I appreciate it. <laughs> and, you know, like she's. You can go to a nail salon and you can be like, I want this design. And they'll be like, oh, you can't have that. And it's like, well, I mean, I know I can because I'm looking at it right now on a nail somewhere. And you're charging me $145. So why don't you just give me that nail? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she's always like, yeah, you want it shorter? We'll go shorter. I don't give a fuck. They're yeah. your nails. I'm like, oh, you're not going to shame me for wanting a shorter nail? Sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's awesome. So I was in Palm Springs over the week, over the week, not even the weekend. Yeah. And I think that's why I also had like a serious case of Sunday scaries. Yeah. Just because I hadn't gone on like an actual vacation. I know like I, my life is very fun, but I haven't just decompressed and been on a vacation vacation in a while. Yeah. And so I think getting back from it, I just didn't know what to do with myself. And then leading into the work week, I'm like panicking. And now I know what Sunday scaries are really defined by. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you were having a hard time this morning. <laughs> what with post Palm Springs depression? <laughs> yeah, you go, you're surrounded by all your family and you're having a blast, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh. Do oh. you hear what you did? There? <laughs> what I did think was funny though while we were in Palm Springs, what? Nothing. Continue. What did you want? To I don't make out? corrections on the show anymore because oh, they're fine. not appreciated. You're great. And I've been making the same too since the day I was born. I said life's. No. Oh. The sudden. All of a sudden. Yes, sir. I hate that. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to get that fucking nap, though. <laughs> it's, 
Just trip. take this as like a bonus episode. Like we probably weren't going like to be Like if we here. had a Patreon, this is where that would live. Yeah, like this is not the caliber of a regular episode. <laughs> but uh, So you were you were had your post Palm Springs depression. Yeah, and while we were in Palm Springs, like obviously when I'm with my grandma, I have to take a million pictures because I just so need cute. to cherish every moment. Yeah. But when we're taking photos, unless I'm really acting like she's a child or a dog, I don't get what I want from her, which is like focusing. <laughs> like I gotta be like, Nana, oh, Nana. Over here, over here, Grandma, over here. And then, like, smile big, smile big. Say meats. And after three days of saying smile big, she goes, I just don't understand why I have to smile big all the time. <laughs> Poor Nana. <laughs> and then I started thinking about live? it. And I was like, wow. I am objectifying my grandma. Well, it's just weird that, like, our go-to is smiling in photos, and subconsciously I don't even realize that that's, like, selling happiness. But that's what everyone does when they go to take a photo. Because when do you ever go to take a photo and you just, like, use your resting face? I mean, I think I'm sexier with my resting face, but I hear what you're saying, and I agree with it. I also, this is why I hate a posed photo. Like, I'd rather not have a group of people posed in front of the Grand Canyon. I'd rather have a candid moment of, you know mom and dad kissing and they don't know I'm taking their picture. Right. Like an actual slice of life moment. I understand. It's like our town where they're like, does anyone ever truly appreciate life like really, truly while they're living it? And the fucking stage renders just like, no bitch, they don't. And this was written a long time ago before Instagram. And now it's even more true. And my grandma was like, well, I'm not not having fun. I was like, I know, but you really just need to showcase. You look miserable. You need to showcase your fun. <laughs> Show the blog you're having Fun. No, these were just for photos on my camera right, roll. Right. No, I know. And so I just thought it was fascinating. And I thought, wow, because when I do smile, I laugh because I like don't want it to be fake. Like, yeah. you know, have you ever but smiled next to me? Laugh. When I'm yeah. like, <laughs> and it makes me laugh hysterically and it makes me feel dark. <laughs> it makes me feel dark and scared. Yeah. About the multiverse of it all. What about the multiverse? I, well, I just finished a book. It's called Dark Matter. It's about multiverses. You're really hitting it hard in the books. I'm in a reading season. I love what can it. I say? Um, so I read Dark Matter. It's about a guy who's like, man, do I love my life as a, as a dad and a college professor or do I wish I had pursued my grander ambitions as an atomic physicist? Mm -hmm. And then one day he's like abducted and like thrown into a different universe, literally. And then he realize like he, he comes to realize like what is important to him and everything. But the, 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 the game of the book is that a multiverse scenario happens every time a person makes a choice. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a branching out of every possible option that could have been. And I fucking hate that. Like, I don't want to make any more decisions in my life because now I'm just thinking about like all the me's that branch out from this one moment where I make this one choice and it's like, are they going to be okay? And what am I experiencing in the multiverse? Because it's probably fucking awful and somewhere. And what if you get flip flopped into it? one day and, and I never would like to like that's why I'm always <laughs> saying like bless you sim god you're doing great sweetie like don't fuck See, this up and I don't know the difference between parallel universes and multiverse it might I be think one it's and the, the same. same but once upon a time I wanted to do a video on my parallel universe but it was just so mind fucking that I like I wrote yeah, I wrote out an outline like seven different times and I was like okay I'll go back to my 20 year old self and then like go live in that apartment and live the life with decisions I would have have made oh my if I God. didn't make the current decisions I have made. Wait, I would love to do that with you if you actually want to commit to it, but I also think we would have like panic attacks and breakdowns. Because <laughs> like literally on the way here, I was even thinking about it, it's like, I don't want to choose what song I listen to. I want it all to be random going forward, be advised. Well, what, so why are we in this consciousness though? Like why aren't we the people I think that because we're lucky as other... fuck. If you think about it. So everyone that's listening though is also lucky as fuck. Like we're yeah. all living our our current consciousness as we know it. Yeah, and I think, you know, all things considered, this ain't a half bad consciousness. Like, if you think about it, there's a consciousness where the fucking Cuban Missile Crisis did not end the way it did. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in that universe. It's probably not chill. Like, there's all these different possibilities, and it's terrifying, and I don't want to deal with that. Like, don't ask me if I want to take fucking surface streets or the fucking freeway ever again. Like, I will just go. And also, I might just start living my life at the will of an eight ball. I might just start shaking an eight ball and having that make up my mind for me. I already kind of do that. Don't you see our spinner? We use our spinner all the time. I do see our time. spinner. And I have that choice-making coin. So. But sometimes you're like, choice-making coin be damned. Yeah. And you make your own choice. Yeah. Do you have anxiety now? Yeah. See what I mean? It's awful. <laughs> 
Really liked the book, though. Kind of sad I went through it so quick. <laughs> <laughs> and what's it called? Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Yeah, it was a New York Times bestseller. All right. Well, what else is on your list? You have un readable writing i <laughs> realize that actually i think it's because i type so much now that the muscles in my hands have atrophied <laughs> so we talked about how i'm a big dill and we plugged alexis also another fun fact about alexis at nailology in san diego <laughs> is that she and her husband have exactly the same name and always have first and last name are the same they're both alex something you're kidding me no it's not funny nightmare so sometimes when they're like having a conversation about the kids or if they're like joking and arguing she's like well the kids have my last name know that I didn't know that you could just create a last name when you're having a child what because we were deciding on if our child our unborn child is going to have Adams Yaw or Dawson and I'm always like well they can't have Dawson because that's a fake last name yeah. and then somebody had told us that you can choose whatever last name you want to put on your child's birth certificate yeah. and it doesn't even have to follow suit in your last name they're like you can start no. a whole new generation of people yeah but that doesn't make sense to me I mean I don't know how that doesn't make sense to you. It's a fairly <laughs> simple concept. <laughs> you just pick the last name of your baby. And it can be anything you want. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty fascinating to me. I'm going to have an icky popsicle. That's my baby's name. Um, oh, speaking I of which, do you want to talk about your meeting? Baby stuff? Oh, well, that's part of the other reason. Oh, my gosh. Honey looks ridiculous right now. I oh, missed it. She was standing uh, on it the outskirts of the hot tub, but in on the pool side. Yeah, um, yeah. That's another reason that I'm just kind of like on edge because I had we have to be finished by one because I have a, there's a million meetings in this trying to have a kid process because mm -hmm. there's a million different people that are involved. So it's like it has been chaotic and it feels honestly like a full time job with the amount of emails and people involved and trying to schedule. It, like welcome to parenthood. Yeah, so it feels like I've added another like another podcast on top of the podcast yeah. but anyways we have a meeting today at one it's just about like this is about the egg process but then tomorrow we're do, we're going to the fertility clinic which means that we're preparing ourselves to give semen so are you actually giving semen or are you just going there and getting emotionally prepared to do the deed in there the next time you go no tomorrow is a semen sample tomorrow you're jacking into a cup yeah are these the potential baby semens or is this just a semen test so first they do the semen samples to see like if we have a if like they'll test both of ours and yeah. we'll see if we have a high sperm count they'll see like they'll they'll just send your sperm to a lab and see what's going on sexy and then after they like if if our sperm is of caliber to have a child yeah then you go back and you have to do it again Hell yeah. but you can't do anything sec you can't ejaculate for two to five days before be okay you go in to you? do this I mean, I mean it's 48 hours honey what you said two to five days two to five days yeah yeah. So the, at the low end of the day, you just have to make it 48 hours. Right. Yeah. And it's tomorrow, so I'm already halfway there. Yeah. Here we go. How many days has it been since you ejaculated? <laughs> Come on, Nana's listening. <laughs> Smile big. <laughs> How many days? We're going to make the two day. We're going to make the two day. <laughs> <laughs> they recommended three. Um, but... <laughs> But we're not in the business of passing tests. But here. so we started getting nervous about it because I was like, and then you just had to come. Well, no. <laughs> we were so nervous we just needed to ejaculate. No, think about the reality of what I'm gonna have to do tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to walk into a fluorescently lit room. But also, this is your number. This happens to you regardless. You're getting hard at the doctor's office all the fucking that time. That doesn't mean I'm I'm coming to completion. Are you guys going to be in the same room together? Is this what, too much? So we started YouTubing videos about like what the experience is going to be like. And I said, well, do you think they're going to let us do this together? And he goes, absolutely not. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, that would be pretty weird, right? If you send a couple into a room. I mean, no matter what, it's procreation. It's science. I know, but it just seems so... I mean I mean it's not sexy it's not sexy and it's, it's not just, sexy so then you go in you say hi to whoever is greeting you and then they take you into a room where you just have to go have fun with yourself and you got to get really turned on because you want to get the most out as possible I'm just saying hey. like aren't there sorry what? I just don't know what that plant is so maybe <laughs> she shouldn't be oh, yeah. eating it we've got all the dogs running wild um yeah, you want to get the most out as possible so that you get the you best sample. So that's from, you come more the more aroused you are? 
I think so. Like if I were to come, f- oh my god! No, tell me. <laughs> I'm just saying, like <laughs> if I were to get to completion very quick, like if I was like, oh, we have five minutes, and I gotta like really do this. This is a lot. Um, parents, no, it's important. I'm just saying, but parents click out. Like I this mean, it's is too late for that. Their kids already know how they're made now. <laughs> I know, but like. <laughs> I don't want people I, you know, like family. family I mean, they know how a baby is made. Yeah, but me talking about the different amounts of cum based on how turned on I am is like (laughs) too much for my mom to be listening to. Well, sorry, Vicky. Okay, (laughs) but anyways, like say Shane and I have to leave the house in five minutes. If I get off in two minutes as opposed to really getting turned on. The fact that you have to leave in in five minutes minutes and you guys are still doing something with five minutes. I'm just making hypothetical situations. (laughs) Are you? (laughs) And I'm saying if you prolong it and I think the kids would call it edging like if you get close to coming and then you hold it back and you do that multiple times i think the more you're going to produce so then when it actually comes out there's a bigger look i just want you to give my kid the sex talk like this is what i should have gotten as a child (laughs) this is the information i needed well i really love you feel like a teacher with your you know we're very educational today yeah we are we're changing the world so i hope it all goes well but then i just think like the embarrassment of then walking out and then like it's a lot then you go and have your consultation with the doctor doctor so it's like will you talk to him after you blow your load yes so our you have to go look at someone in the eyes and have a talk with them after you jack off in their house after he knows yes I have I'm scheduled with the nurse at 1 30 my appointment with the doctor is at 2 30 so he knows that right after I'm done doing that I'm gonna walk in and be like hey doctor nice yeah, to meet also, you also why can't they do the reverse you know you know what I mean can you call and ask <laughs> can you like hey guys like I'd rather jack off after meeting with you guys because <laughs> quite frankly I won't be able to focus at all are you joking <laughs> yeah it's gonna see be this is my problem with doctors i feel like they don't have because they're so <laughs> medical they're like they have no emotional, emotional co- like understanding of how hard it might be on a fucking human being who's just jacked off in a strange fucking sterile environment and then have to go in and have a very serious conversation about making a fucking baby i'll be fine you will. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get hard in that meeting. <laughs> you let us know. You let us know. I will. I'm sure I'll vlog the process too. I mean, as much as I can. Um. So speaking of babies, mm-hmm. can I keep that train rolling? Last week I said, "Who the fuck is Baby Jack?" Mm-hmm. And the and this was based off of the Kylie Jenner, our son video. Mm-hmm. Chris is just moving the umbrella. I feel like it's insane oh. for me to not acknowledge <laughs> what just happened because you can probably see it and it's distracting. Okay. Um, but so in the Kylie Jenner, like our son video, mm-hmm. um, Travis's mom says baby Jack called and said, I'm having a baby. Baby Jack is Travis. Apparently his name is Jacquez. Oh, I'm saying that wrong. I must be saying that wrong. But I do think it's funny that a guy whose first name is Jack decides to go by Travis. Hmm. Like, what was that change? Maybe Jack's just too common. Travis? I don't know that many Travises. Are you joking? A Travis Barker. What? I don't know a Travis in my real Travis life. Travis is a very common name. Okay, well, I don't know any. It's just funny to me, like, going from Jack to Travis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Travis Webster? I don't know. I would have stayed with Jack. It seems cooler. Or the way that it's said. Okay. Um, so thanks, <laughs> audience, for letting us know. And also, because you guys do know so much, I have a very pressing question and would love to hear your guys' insights on ingrown toenails. Oh. On this week's episode <laughs> segment of Podience Knows Best, please, God, tell me how to handle an ingrown toenail because this shit is agonizing. Mm, I had one in my thumb finger you had a hangnail a hangnail that's different and gosh i just kept ripping at it and my whole thumb was filled with blood i can go ahead and tell you ripping at it's not the answer i know but i couldn't just let it sit there i think you need to get like cuticle cutters Mm -hmm. for that but i want to know can i eradicate an ingrown toenail or do i just have to continue letting it grow out in pain and then taking a little tiny nail spatula and lifting it up from underneath the skin and cutting the skin away a little bit and cutting the nail away like how do, how do i rectify so, the situation your, tell me your nail please. is too big for your nail bed my yeah on the side my toenail grows into my skin and it is so fucking painful <sighs> Well, I think you got to get, once you solve the problem, then you got to get ahead of the curve and really always clip Ugh, the, the edge. The way you said the curve. That's what I, that's all I can do right now. Like, and I get relief when I clip the edge, but I'd love for it to stop growing like that. So audience, sound off in the comments below. How do we fix my ingrown toenails? 
<laughs> when we come back, let's break down. Yeah, I think we need to gather our thoughts. I think we're good. I think our thoughts are flowing like water. No. I think if you want them, we got them flowing like water. You know what I'm saying? Um, thoughts, words. I That's can't. what we do here. We don't even do stories. We do thoughts and words. Have you? This is the Potty and Snow's Best segment. God damn it. Oh, and before we break down, I will say this. And it's very important that I bring this to the audience's attention. <laughs> On the drive up here, I was reminiscing on when Chris fainted in the podcast shed. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was thinking about it because, like, my friend was telling me that, because we were joking. What was it? Doesn't matter. We were joking because her grandma was like, oh, a cold breeze hit my back, and I swear to God, it broke it. And I was like, <laughs> that's so funny. She's like, she was very insistent on it, so I took her to the fucking hospital. And I was, like, laughing. Like, Chris was like, I think I need an ambulance in both. Rather than I'm like, no, you don't. And then I realized... We hate Shit's Creek or we don't get Shit's Creek because we are Shit's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> we are those awful siblings. And that's why we're like, this isn't even funny. Like, it's because it's us. Because <laughs> we're awful. <sighs> <sighs> and well, we'll... Oh, no, 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 wait. <laughs> I thought, okay. Oh my God. No. Damn it, Chris. Why did you? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, how's your life? Good. <laughs> That's it from Chris. <laughs> He's had just as good of a week as us. God damn. Hell yeah, Chris. <laughs> this is what happens. All I do is work. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we'll be back with more words after this. Maybe just next week. No, we got to do another 20 minutes of nothing. No, we have things to talk here. No, we have some iced tea and at least some advice questions. Because you want advice from So us. fucking stay tuned. <laughs> Whatever you do, see this episode to the end. All right. And, like, let me know what to do about my toenails. What? What do you mean, what? <laughs> Tell them what you just said. One take two, Marker. Well, she's taking pictures of me, and I was like, ugh, not my hair looking like that. And she said it looks so daddy. I had to text my roommate and say that Ryland was a mess today, and then I took a picture of him, and he's so cute. That was your context yeah. in sending that? <laughs> and then he was like, oh, my hair's a mess, and it's like, no, you're the cutest you've ever been. Okay. In today's iced tea, <laughs> I mean, do you even, like, are we going here? I mean, I definitely think that it is within our tradition and style to commentate <laughs> on a dead horse that's been beaten well past. And see, I was almost thinking like we weren't like other girls. We're the only podcast that didn't make our episode. Should we be unique about the Oscars? Listen, neither of us watched. Both of us, <laughs> both of us have opinions about things we've never seen. <laughs> um, that being said, Ryland sent me a five-year-old clip of. Adam knows best. Oh, well, this And by is... the way, the kid in that episode, Adwin, I know him. Okay, well, hold on. You're really jumping the gun here. Oh. Like, that's, like, further down into our list. Oh, my bad, my bad. Well... <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go we'll go for the room temp tea first. Okay. And then we'll hit that ice cold. Okay, well, I was just... I guess the pickup is Chris Rock had his first performance. Yeah. After everything had happened. Yeah. And he didn't really address it, which... No. I thought was classy. I mean, yeah, but what the thing that I thought was interesting about this is his tickets were selling for forty eight dollars, like uh, baseline price. Yeah, and then and resale tickets they were reselling for three hundred and fifty dollars. I think because people were thinking that they were going to get something. Yeah, but based on what they saw from the Oscars, I think it it would be a bad assumption to assume that that's what he was going to do because. I feel like he's really going to pro- when he do- once he does do this. I feel like it will be a special, probably on Netflix or somewhere huge. That's what he said. He said, "I'm going to talk about it someday." Today, not that day. It was pretty funny how he entered the show. He's like, "How was everybody's weekend?" Because he had a rough one. <laughs> so I thought that was cute and funny. But I just, I also feel like it's classy of him to not want to discuss what had gone on, and he has created all of this content over probably the span of a year to be doing a, tr- a tour already. Mm-hmm. That it would be like... He's got a big tour. It's like so many cities. Yeah. So good for him. Yeah, good for him. I love him. And then last night at the Grammys, nobody could shut the fuck up about it either. It's just like, oh my God. Well, it's because, yeah, it was the most interesting thing to happen all year long. At the most boring show we've ever been to. But like, (sighs) low-key... You know, that's how I feel. uh, Yeah, I just feel like, and somebody else had said this, and I just agree with them, you don't react to words with violence. No. And so... 
I, and I just think it's very interesting the way that everyone does react and people people's reaction to people reacting. It's just very fascinating to see the world react. Yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty volatile, hot-headed person, and I feel like the answer for me is never violence. Right. But I will cut a bitch with my words. Just kidding. Unless I it's a spider but or watch a snake. your back. Oh, yeah, snakes are... Gotta go. Okay, so then the Grammys were last night. Wow, we brought nothing to the table there. Um, I mean, that's not really our fault. Like, I would blame the Grammys, right? Um, yeah. I mean, did you watch the Grammys? No, but did I need to? <laughs> no. Like, Doge, didn't Doja Cat go pee and almost, like, didn't win her award and then pretended to readjust her labias on stage yeah i will say she's best dressed of the night for sure like that's exactly what i was saying just that <laughs> you're right <laughs> yeah well i'm not talking about that outfit she changed outfits yeah. she had a different outfit for the show but her red carpet outfit was the best outfit i've seen in a long time she was dressed by versace it was just this gorgeous moment that fit her perfectly she is so funny so funny she's also like i think she's upset about something well, yeah, she quit music like two weeks ago. Did well, she actually quit I, music like two weeks ago? Or was she like the audacity of fans these days? Like, am I actually going to have a real conversation with you people based off of whatever tomfoolery was happening? See, I didn't follow. I just heard the people on the red carpet. And then I guess she had gotten into an argument with somebody on Twitter. And then it ended with her saying, I quit. I mean, I, I don't, I might be wrong, but I do know that she had canceled a show somewhere and that the she like didn't apologize for canceling the show and then actually went public and said, I do not apologize for canceling the show. And she canceled the show for safety reasons. It was raining cats and dogs. Okay. And uh, Miley Cyrus had also canceled a show because when her flight flew in, it got hit by lightning and th it just wasn't a safe fucking time to do a show. Right. So they weren't doing shows, but Miley publicly was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And she just was like, I'm not sorry. And I kind of, you know, I've heard that. I'm not sorry. It wasn't safe. Yeah. The thing that is, I think, why people expect explanations is because it's not just the ticket. It's yeah. they've taken time off of work. They've uh, uprooted their life in a way to yeah. make plans to see somebody that they appreciate so yeah. much. And then to do all of that planning and get all your best friends together and then to feel like you're not even being acknowledged. However, on the other side of that, I can see from the artist standpoint, there's a lot of pressure after like putting an album out that is so successful and being featured on every everyone's other on everyone else's tracks and then you're on tour while also trying to make another hit like you're in this never-ending machine yeah and she's just a person you know well that's what i want to say like i feel like in the past like do you remember the katie perry documentary mm -mm. there was a katie perry documentary and there's a scene where she's huddled up in a little ball and she's in this little rising platform before it rises onto the stage and she's sobbing hysterically she's having a fucking meltdown and she has to she's scream crying in the little hole and then they push her up on stage and she's like California girls <laughs> and it's like I think that there used to be this thing where celebrities and artists on this world stage are not entitled to their human necessities of feelings and food and life and they are to just shut up and dance no matter what the fuck is happening in their life and I feel like that's changing to some degree now where it's there is this understanding that if you need a personal moment but you gotta really need it if you need a personal moment, you are entitled to have that as a human being in this version of the multiverse. Yeah, and there's a few different aspects to this. It also depends on how much your career is being run by other people versus how much you've signed up for yourself. And the public's never yeah. going to know that. And so, but I do also feel if you do have you have this job with so many perks for a reason yeah, you have and a duty i do and a think commitment. you need to own up so like i don't know what was going on I'm with her so, but right. it, i, I mean, do feel like you probably have a responsibility to relay it the fastest in the fastest most timely manner as possible so people can get not get on their flights if right. they booked flights and but i also understand from her side like 
the it feels like the world's asking of everything from you and your schedule's so full and you're just going to crumble at any moment and you can't perform uh, or she be didn't a cancel for emotional reasons she canceled for safety reasons because there was a thunder lightning and i'm sure somebody downpour. put a statement out right i don't i think that yeah there was a statement out because they people know the show was canceled. canceled yeah but and this wasn't you know this was like a safety call like right. miley canceled her show too like yeah. shows were being canceled it was not a safe time what they were upset about is that she said i'm not sorry yeah and i mean people will be upset about anything yeah so and, but i do think you know like to some degree there is something to be said about the like i'm not sorry that i canceled something for my own fucking safety and for your safety i 100 like, agree the fuck yeah because like the, it's like they can't do right you know what i mean it's either like you're facing a fucked up situation like what happened astro world where the show must go on or you cancel the show and i get like granted these are two very different situations one was you know situational and artificial and one was you know a force majeure of the environment and nature mm -hmm. but both scenarios were unsafe were deemed unsafe and in one place they continued doing the show and in another place they decided to cancel the show right so it's like you're damned if you do you damned if you don't but i think that we need to like humanize these people they can still be our heroes we can still worship them and like yeah it sucks ass that your show was canceled i hope there's a refund yeah oh i'm sure I i'm sure there's a refund there's crazy insurance for those things like i'm sorry that you missed the opportunity but also like doja cat's an out-of-pocket person i also just live for her like yeah she's, she's so wild fun. she she really is bringing fun to the music industry which i think yeah. is incredible and i love when she does like a sponsored ad on tiktok because she's like <laughs> She's over it, but it's like the way that she does it draws so much attention to the product that it's like the best product deal they're ever going to get. <laughs> she kills me. Um, so, I mean, I thought, do you have any other fashion standouts? I don't know if I'm really in the mood to be. Any other fashion standouts from the Grams? You know what? I, 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 uh, Haley Bieber okay, and Addison Rae were matching. Yeah. And I... I gotta Should say, we go get silk dresses? I hate them. Wait, bleep that. No, I want to wear a silk dress with you. <laughs> I mean, I'll wear one for sure, but I, I just didn't like that. I thought I liked Addison's more than I liked Haley's, and I heard some people saying like, "Oh, Haley's just letting Justin shine," and I agree with that. But, but I Justin like, was in an oversized. Well, he's been doing this thing with Balenciaga, so like Balenciaga styled him. He was probably just like, sure, whatever. Is Balenciaga also putting him in the baby hoodies that don't fit? Well, see, okay. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> well, Balenci like, I keep getting these uh, promo ads for Justin Bieber and Balenciaga, and everything they put him in is like 25,000 sizes too big. So they're trying to make that the fashion trend, and it's just weird. And then when he's doing his shows, he's literally wearing a cropped hoodie zip up that doesn't fit. That's like for with, a five year old. With black pleather pants it's that like whole... all the Instagram baddies wear. It's so sick. I it's wasn't sick and sickened. Uh, and normally I think Justin Bieber is like I love his fashion. Like Yeah, I think me too. I think he, he's so hot. He takes risks. He's oh I feel like he's always at the forefront of doing great in style as yeah. a man because it's like casual comfortable but elevated and i don't this this thing he's got going with balenciaga i love balenciaga i love justin bieber but this specifically isn't for me this ain't it sis <laughs> i saw a lot of people comparing him to the little kid actor in the tom hanks movie big which you probably haven't seen but you should because it's a classic where when he goes from being a grown man to being a little boy again and he's just in this huge ass suit like walking down the street like mom i'm back i'm back mom I had a wild week in the city where I dated a grown woman and went to FAO shorts and played the piano with my feet. Here I am. Also, what an epic weekend for that boy. It's crazy. You know. After two award shows back to back, I just... <laughs> I just have to keep this train of moving. I just couldn't think Hollywood could be any more fake. It's just too much for me to consume even anymore because it, none of it's real. It's all so fake. Yeah. So there's that. And then that leads us into our uh, Adam Ruins Everything clip where it's Our like, Adam Ruins Everything clip from five years ago. This it morning- It still I'm, stands strong though. It, you're not wrong. It does stand strong, but it was so funny because he's like, watch this clip before we come, before you come on the show. And I put, I put it on and I'm, first of all, the other guy that's in the video, mm -hmm. that's Adwin Brown. I know him. Okay. I love him. By the way, Adwin, I know you probably don't watch this show, but like if you do- Big shout out to Adwin. Also, his birthday might be when this comes out. Adam's birthday is like two weeks before my... Oh my God, we've made it how far into this episode without talking about the fact that it's my birth month? 
<laughs> the <laughs> fuck? <gasps> so Raylan sends me this clip from five years ago. And, and that made me laugh. It's, it, uh, it's him talking about how talent doesn't win Oscars, money does. And yeah. every award academy is different, whatever you call them. It's and, like they're, like every award show is run by a different group of people from the Golden Globes to the Emmys to the Oscars to the SAG to the... But the reason I was spirit. talking about this last night is because the biggest award of the night at the Grammys last night is Album of the Year. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman who won Album of the Year, I had to then Google because I had never heard of this man. Who is he? Um, he he's like leads the band on Stephen Colbert's Tonight Show, and he also has... He has something of his own. Who is but he? I don't know. And that's and I'm not like shading him. Maybe the Recording Academy does think he produced the best album out there. And I haven't listened to it yet. Maybe sonically, musically, it is the best thing ever. But I just think it's interesting out of like Kanye West was in the category. Oh, this guy? Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, John Baptiste. I mean, he's probably a big deal. Well... I just feel like for the album of the year, like it would be who influenced the year the most and having it go to an album that I feel like most people haven't heard of. I just thought it was interesting. And then it really goes into play. Like what is the qualifications for all of these award shows? And that's why I was looking at this uh, video because it is very interesting. Even for the o Oscars, it's like studios pay up to $10 million to get, a movie even nominated yeah. they take all of their actors to a thousand different luncheons and brunches like Coda won best picture and now they're putting it in theaters again yeah and even Denzel Washington had won an award and he was talking about a previous award saying like oh this person took me to this lunch and he said we're gonna feed them all the best food and show them the money or we're gonna give them all these watches you're gonna take pictures with them and you're gonna win and they cater the oh the the movie and the actors to the people that are voting for these so it really is Hollywood is paying big big money because it shows and it's been like proven over time that a nomination could rack up to 20 million more in movie sales just because of the the notoriety you get for being nominated so it's all a game and political like everything is yeah. honestly like it's understandable how it got to where it has gotten but then it's just like what does it all even mean you know I mean we know it means nothing and that's the big takeaway that I got from the Oscars this year. Like I used to, when you're when you're young, you're like, oh my god, an Academy Award, holy shit! Mm -hmm. Like back in that day, these fucking meant something. And then I feel like, well, I think over the time, it's like you, this sort of the curtain gets pulled back, and because of social media and like how connected we can be to these celebrities outside of their craft and the work that they do, you just sort of realize like. I don't know that I give a fuck about that well, anymore. Like, I don't know that that's an esteemed position because it's all changed to be hyper political. Like you're removing some of the categories from air and you're adding categories like people's choice at the Academy Awards. And it's just like, at what point are we gonna acknowledge that this is a completely artificial, like artificial simulation where you're all just jacking each other off and then shaking fucking hands. Well, and the thing for it is it gives, these awards give validation. Like when Netflix had come up, this this video that I had sent yeah. you also showcases this. It's like for Netflix to make themselves a serious competitor in Hollywood, they needed to get recognized by the Oscars yeah. or by these bi the Emmys. And it's like to do that, then you open more opportunities. More actors will want to be on your streaming service. More So it is like to become a part of something bigger, you have to play these games and I just think it's interesting even the actors will get up there and be like I know awards don't mean like they don't validate my existence or la di da di da but it's but like suddenly but you, I feel validated. but you went to five million <laughs> luncheons to get yeah. to where you're standing right now and I don't even knock them for that because that's what you have to do to get your next movie if you have an Oscar if you're an Oscar winning actor obviously all the doors are going to open for you so it's just sometimes a there's a curse of game. Oscars and in, in some of the categories like a lot of the times like people who win an Oscar it's like the world is sick and tired of seeing them and they have to take a break for a little while it's like that's like an oscar curse but then the other side of it is exactly what you're talking about like people who win best director it's like the sky's the limit for you professionally right now yeah jobs are going to be knocking down your fucking door right now so you know yeah it's crazy 
And yeah. it's so fake. Like when Joe did the, my my husband did the credit sequence and the bottom thirds for a TV show on National Geographic. And National Geographic had just started dabbling in scripted content. And that year, Joe was notified that he was in the pool of considerations for an Emmy. Wow. And he was like, what the fuck? And that's when he realized he's like, wait, I'm not like in a pool of consideration like with Game of Thrones for like best credit sequence. <laughs> like National Geographic just put a shit ton of money into this marketing campaign and wants me to go to this lunch because they're trying to win an Emmy at any cost for scripted content because it's a new thing that they're doing. And like Netflix, they want to be validated. Right. And it's just wild. Hey, honey. Uh, uh, uh. Don't you dare go in that hole, honey. No digging hole. No digging. No, no, no. Yes. Okay. Um, a Portland man finds semen in his red robin salad. Shut up. How did he know? Could he taste it? And well, he was like, that, semen. So he got in an altercation or a it disagreement with the host because he didn't get seated as fast as he thought other people were getting seated. And then when he finally did get his food, he says that he found semen and it's been confirmed that it was semen. No, but, how did he know? That's what I'm saying. Because like, he eats semen? How would you know? Unless you've tasted semen. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people have seen, touched, and tasted semen. I don't know if but, I would know semen to the site. Well, I don't know if I would know semen visually on a salad because exactly. I wouldn't be expecting it there. I wouldn't be expecting it either. Also, can we only talk about semen while holding each other? And why are you so soft? <laughs> <laughs> this is You're going to have no problem in that doctor's office with these soft hands. I moisturize often. They do say the more, like, if you use lube, it could affect uh, the sperm too so, oh, so you just you're gotta going go dry, dry. you're gonna spit on it uh, you, no one needs to know. <laughs> that's not our business save some for yourself so I just thought it was fascinating and if they can prove that the DNA is that of not his which it's in a lab right now then uh, oh he'll be suing God. Red Robin for a million dollars but that leads me to start thinking how did that guy get cum in the salad so fast like how do you just say like hold on I'm gonna well, go get cum in this man's salad I mean maybe he gets off on being angry and it was like a hate come have you ever had restaurant food that you know is tampered with i feel like i must have because i'm so awful <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean that's why you, you're that's why you got to be nice at restaurants and i do try regardless. to be nice i'm like listen thank you so much for the service please don't come in my salad but i do want it a specific way mm -hmm. can you make my salad this way without coming it <laughs> thank you so much that's what i say I say thank you so much for not coming in my salad, but can you also like make it very specifically? Okay, Gen Z and millennials would rather be unemployed than unhappy. I mean, good for them. Do you not feel the same? I don't feel the same, but I, you know, good for them. See, I was listening to somebody talk. Uh, there's another channel that's kind of like all these uh, talking head talk shows, Fox Soul. And I was listening to one of the gentlemen that's on it, and he was a corporate accountant. And he said, I got fired from that job because it wasn't inspiring me anymore. And I was just like slacking off but then i didn't want to go apply for more because it's like why do i want to beg somebody for a position that's going to make me miserable and when you think about it the place that you work or your job is a lot of your life and if yeah. your job's making you miserable what's is that worth having money or not and yeah and see like i agree with that but i also think that a little bit too much of our identities are wrapped up in our work and sometimes, like, a job can just be a job. Would you say we're not guilty of that? Um, I mean, I take weekends off. You know what I mean? And right. I read. <laughs> and I do Legos. And I hike. You, like, I'm not... I think that there's a lot more to me than just what it is that I do. But I also do a lot of different things. So I can... I have, like, a diverse thing. And I do, you know, like my work. But sometimes I disassociate to go to a job. Yeah. I like get in the car and I'm like, all right, so my body's not going to be my own for the next 12 hours, maybe 14. And that's going to be okay. Right. Cause I, and it's like, am I making art? No. Am I going to go home with a paycheck? Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, I think these are in the cases of more salaried nine to five. Yeah. You have to be glued there at all times. But I do think if that's not your vibe, you like, we still have to work. So yeah. like, I think finding maybe a bunch of temporary jobs that allow you to switch it up and keep I, it fun. I, I definitely think happiness is key. And if you're in an, a work environment that's so hideously toxic that you can't let it go when you go home, get the fuck out. If you have a boss that's calling you when you're not at work, that's absurd. Right. I think all of, like, I think that for sure in today's day and age people take work home too often and people seem to live to work instead of work to like live mm -hmm. and 
that's a problem. Like, I really do believe that there is a way to have a standard nine to five job where it stays at work and you go home and you have a life outside of it. Yeah. And this job, you know, supports the economy, supports the community, and you get to go home and be a person who enjoys those things that you're supporting as well. Right. Like when I had that office PA job that was fucking awful, I wouldn't answer the phone until I was in the office. I'm making minimum wage. You do not get to talk to me on the phone on the way to work. You get yeah. to talk to me the second I'm on the clock for you. And the second I'm off the clock for you, I'm not taking your call either. And some people thought that was crazy. Like the production coordinator was like, oh, I, I called you. And I was like, yeah, and I wasn't on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> you pay me very little for 12 hours of my yeah. life. You can talk to me within those 12 hours or not at all. So I think you agree, though, like it's a, a job isn't worth unhappiness. I think a job isn't worth unhappiness, but, but I also being... think the ownership is not on the job to provide your happiness. I think that right now there's a specific issue of people believing that their joy and their happiness can be determined by external factors. And I don't think that's true. I honestly think that pure joy and Everything comes from acceptance of the world that you live in and from the inside out. I'm not going to be made happier if I move into a different house. Right. If I'm unhappy inside. Because I, no matter what, my soul is in this shell. Yeah, it might give you a quick fix for three days, yeah. but then you're going to go right back to and where then, you were. Yeah, and then I'm nervous because how the fuck am I going to make my rent this month? Yeah. And then I'm annoyed because I have to fill out this paperwork to get unemployment. And then I'm irritated because I have to do it again and I have to prove to them why I don't have a job. When really what I'm saying is I'm too mentally unhappy to do anything else. But it's like, we got to stop making excuses for our, our unhappiness and claim it and own it in and of ourselves. Right. Shane's up. All right. So with cute. that, let's get into advice though. Okay. We have a, Hair. we have a voicemail submission for today's episode. <laughs> hey, Ryland. Hey, Lizzie. Hi. My name is Michael and I'm a big fan of your show. And I have a question for advice, though. <laughs> so I'm 29 years old, single, no kids, nothing going on. And I live a very routinely life of going to work and coming home every day. And I've recently noticed that I've gotten comfortable living this way. And I have, like, no motivation to do anything to progress or improve my life. And the things that I used to be past. Oh, my phone always does that. Oh, like, no longer interest me. And I'm trying to bring that motivation back, but it just seems like a daunting task that requires too much energy that I just don't have anymore. And I'm worried that I'm preventing myself from growth and improvements as I head into my 30s. And I'm just curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are and how would you deal with feeling this way. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Wow. Okay. So, that was so on topic. Yeah. And I honestly didn't even mean to do that. But so this is a person who has the job, has, I mean, he's, he's there, but he's not. I, I think he's struggling with the monotony and how comfortable he is with it. And I would say the fact that you've recognized that you've become comfortable with something that you wish you weren't means that you're not as comfortable as you think you are. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> so that's kind of good, right? No. So you you know you you know you're uncomfortable and you know you want to do something about it and then here's where I'm going to get annoying. Just do it. Well, and if you're comfortable at your job, you're probably no longer being challenged by your job. So I would say get yourself out there and make your life be exciting to you again because if if your job is so step and repeat, it's probably like you might want to start there because you probably have a really good skill set and you could probably make more money with the experience you have somewhere else, somewhere that would challenge you. And then I would what? Keep going. I would also encourage you to try new hobbies. Find something where maybe you'll find people that are worth leaving the house for. Because I also understand uh, it takes a lot for me to want to leave the house when I could be comfortable and know I could have a good, fun night in rather than hanging out with somebody I'm not jazzed up on hanging out with. But Yeah, I think no matter what, it's like find... You know there's something in your heart of hearts that you've always wanted to do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have this thing of being afraid of the, the, the static nature of where you are. And so start thinking about that. Ask yourself questions. Journal. Like, what are the, what are the things that you want to do? What's your bucket list? Like, in your, in, in your simulation, 
How do you want the next part to look? Are you enjoying the journey you're on? Do you want to spice up the journey? Do you want to change the journey entirely? Like the sky's the limits. Like these are our lives. And you want to be excited about your life. Not being excited about your life yeah. isn't fun. So I agree really asking yourself and instead of just doing the step and repeat, be make a conscious effort to really check in with yourself and find what would be exciting to you. Like I could close my eyes and see like, oh my gosh, this would really get me jazzed yeah. up. And sometimes even I feel like, oh, how do I take the steps to get there though? Like I'm already on this train that's moving. And so I think that's something we can all do is ask ourselves what we really want and make a, a roadmap to at least taking steps to getting there. And who cares if it's stupid or silly? Like I have this all the time and people are like, why, Lizzie, why did you spend so much time making a, a short film that's 30 seconds and all it is is about eating ass? And it's like, because I wanted to see it. And it makes you laugh. And it makes me laugh and it makes me happy. And I find that when I'm doing something that I am passionate about, that I want to see, that I love, other people respond similarly. And all of a sudden, I'm outside my comfort zone, I'm taking a risk, and I'm doing something I wouldn't have otherwise done because it's not something that anyone else told me to do. And it's authentic to you. And when you hit... It's going to be because of that. You know what I mean? And it's the same in every life. What is going to make your dick hard, Michael? <laughs> Think about it. Honestly, like I wanted to read. So I started like I, I, I thought about what I like reading. It's like what books have I not been able to put down in the past? OK, these ones. And then I can categorize about it. What book I want. Do the same thing with your life. What in the past has made your fucking heart sore and your eyes bright? Find what that thing is and explore it until it bores you and then find the next thing. All right, Michael, what makes your dick hard? Call us back and let us know. And with that, we do have to end today's show. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this complicated day for me personally. <laughs> Aren't you glad we did it? I am. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoying our show. If you want to follow us on social media, we're at The Sip Official. We're also all on there personally. We will see you next week and we love you very much. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's The, the Sip. sip. Good job. We got there. So proud of you. The first 12 were rough. I don't think so. All right, we'll see. You'll see it. You'll text me. Look at these calluses. Cutting. Cutting.